Okay, we're going to call to meet, order the special meeting of the governing board. It, this is a public hearing. Of, um, we have three board members here physically, one on the phone, and Mr. Bear will be here shortly. Can I have a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Four zero. Three item list for the public hearing is. For, we'll just take one at a time. 4A public hearing for the proposed 2016-17 expenditure budget. Mr. Miglarino. Uh, President Gregoire, members of the board, Dr. Weidenheimer. Um, uh, this evening we have a public hearing, uh, as you mentioned, on these three items. Uh, and then later and during the regular meeting there will be um, an opportunity for these to be formally considered by the board. Um, just in terms of uh, process, uh, as we've mentioned previously on several occasions, so I'll go through this quickly. I don't intend to read each of these slides. Um, we've proposed the budget back on, at the last meeting on June 28th. Um, this meeting is to formally adopt uh, the expenditure budget for uh, what we call fiscal year 17. It would be the 2016-17 uh, school year. <clears throat> and as part of that, we have three financial priorities that we've uh, discussed over uh, several years. Um, they include salary increases for all employees, restoring capital funding, which is where the majority of the state imposed reductions have, have, uh, have impacted our budget, and in, in addressing our structural uh, deficit that we have. Uh, we've addressed all three of those, um, and you'll see that as we work through um, some of the slides here. <clears throat> the uh, um, just kind of a, a high level overview of what's included in the adopted budget and, and this really has not changed uh, since when uh, since this was proposed back in uh, at the June 28th meeting uh, M&O override increase from 10 to 15 percent uh, thanks to the voters and um, uh, approving the that back in November 2015 uh, slight inflationary increase added to the M&O and just as a reminder our preliminary budget um, that we first uh, uh, shared with with the board had a higher inflationary uh, factor in it at almost 1.47 percent uh, this is just under one percent uh, that is prescribed to us um, and uh, we had an early estimate that was inflated um, current year funding provisions been included uh, again the legislative changes uh, we will be funded based on the number of students that we have next year uh, previously we were always funded on the number of students we had in the prior year. Our TEI, or Teacher Experience Index, has gone down uh, considerably, um, and that is relative to uh, the state average. Uh, and it does include the provision for the Prop 123 funding that was approved by the voters in May of uh, 2016. Uh, we, we are projecting uh, the carry forward of $8 million. Um, lion's share of that, or 6.7 million of that, is the Prop 123 funding from fiscal year 16 um, that was just provided to us in the last weeks of June. And so we're carrying that forward into fiscal year 17, 2016, 17 school year uh, to be able to spend it. And, and you can see the plan there that we've talked about uh, at length. I'm uh, just kind of continuing on uh, you know, some highlights. We've got uh, our staffing is based on a slight uh, student enrollment increase of six tenths of a percent. Uh, we kept the staffing standards the same. Um, so, um, you know, first grade uh, class size will be 28, second to third grade 29, and so forth. Uh, district additional assistance cut 13 and a half million dollars, or 85.5 percent. So that's an ongoing cut. I will be well over 83 million dollars in cumulative cuts as a result of state imposed reductions uh, over the last eight years. Uh, continued cash accounts to uh, help offset needs, um, but we like to uh, consider this a much more sustainable amount. Uh, as I mentioned during our financial priorities, um, we have we were working to address the structural deficit. Uh, this at 1.7 million dollars is a much more sustainable amount that we're uh, counting on out of our cash accounts. <coughs> Um, the adopted budget, this is a change here. The adopted budget does now include administ the administrative recommendations for employee reclassifications and additions. And we have some additional slides on there um, that has that detail. Uh, the net result is the general budget increasing to just over $201 million. Uh, and again, a good portion of that have, has to do with uh, the carry forward 
from the fiscal year 16 uh, Prop 123 funds. <coughs> uh, this is kind of what the reclassifications look like, and I apologize for uh, the small smallness of the font. Uh, but we looked at these previously, and um, the first section of these reclassifications or employee additions have no impact on the M&O budget. <coughs> It totals $178,000, but it is funds that are either reallocated within departments or not part of the M&O fund. Uh, for example, part of uh, community education, uh, which is a separate fund from the uh, maintenance and operation budget. Um, uh, continuing on with this list, we have what I refer to as process-driven reclassifications. There are no additions on this page. Um, these are our apprentice programs uh, through our facilities department or uh, through uh, the um, IST department, what we call a, a program called change of designation. Um, th that totals just over uh, $52,700 for uh, those reclassifications. And then finally, um, a category that I call others. Uh, we have several that were needed as a part of the exempt salary requirement, the new um, exempt salary requirement uh, issued by the Department of Labor, and then a couple that were suggested from the efficiency study that was conducted last school year that the board authorized. Uh, so the total projected m &O cost for those reclassifications and additions is $153,245. Uh, as a result, uh, we have an increase in, um, in teachers, uh, 38 FTE or full-time equivalency uh, due to student growth, uh, 56 classified staff, uh, staff um, uh, to meet uh, special programs, and then eight administrative staff. Uh, and as a reminder, um, this was in lieu of a general salary increase out of Prop 123. The administrative group asked for some additional campus-based support, so uh, four and a half assistant principals and three and a half TOAs or teacher on assignments. On the non-staffing front, um, this was decided what seems to be a long time ago, but our health insurance rates uh, uh, increased by 6%. Half of that cost is going to be borne by uh, reserves that we have within our trust. State retirement went up just slightly. Uh, utilities were left unchanged, but uh, for uh, planning for 17-18 school year, the APS has a rate case that is being considered right now, uh, and it, um, it appears like it's going to have a significant impact on many APS users, including ourselves. Uh, the board budget, as was directed by, uh, by this board, was increased by $12,500. Our safe schools budget was increased by $15,000 to provide for off-duty officers at uh, Vista Peak Elementary. And then our property li liability insurance increased by $100,000 due to uh, increased holdings, uh, not the least of which included the addition of the Sonoran Foothills uh, campus. Uh, as I mentioned uh, previously, just as a reminder, we continue to endure state-imposed uh, reductions, and uh, that's $13.5 million. Um, and I say at least because this gets recalculated because it's a uh, finite number that the state has to uh, uh, reduce the budget by. And once the actual student population is known, they recalculate this. Uh, and that will be finally known when we do the May revision uh, in May of 2017. <clears throat> uh, so what are the tax implications? Uh, and there's a lot of moving parts when it comes to, um, uh, to, to taxes, uh, the, not the least of which is uh, Proposition 117, which was approved back in 2012, um, that kind of uh, changed the structure of taxes for um, all entities, including school districts uh, that have taxing authority. Uh, net result of all these changes is the primary tax rate will be decreasing uh, down uh, to $4.24, but the secondary rate is increasing by 26% uh, to $2.47. Uh, that is largely due to the increase in the m and override, going from 10% to 15%. Remember, that was about an $8 million increase annually uh, that we enjoy as a result of that. Uh, so the net impact on the uh, average assessed valuation residential parcel, uh, which happens to be just over $183,000, is a $107 increase on an annualized basis. That's a 14% increase. <coughs> um, here's just some factors that, uh, that also affect uh, the tax that is paid by the taxpayers. Uh, the qualifying tax, pay, uh, tax rate uh, changes from year to year. Um, the uh, state equalization uh, tax rate changes uh, from year to year. 
uh, the homeowner's rebate also changes from year to year. Uh, and at least for one more year, the amount of cash that we have on hand uh, also affects um, not only the primary but the secondary taxes. Uh, in future years, starting with the, the year 2017-18, uh, the, the law has now been changed that cash will no longer be taken into consideration when we are setting future uh, tax uh, rates. Um, and then the secondary tax is, a, again, a fixed payment schedule for bonds and overrides, uh, basically voter-approved initiatives. And so we had a slight increase in our debt schedule. Um, uh, so about uh, of that $107, about three-quarters of it is due to the override, and then uh, about a quarter of it is due to our debt schedule increasing uh, to pay off uh, our debt as well. Uh, this is kind of what that looks like um, comparing side by side. So uh, the tax rate is only going up 6.1% uh, from $6.32 to $6.71. <clears throat> but um, the tax paid, the total tax paid, and their average parcel is at the bottom of this section, um, is going up $107 or 14%. Again, because the tax rate is multiplied by the assessed valuation. And in this case, the assessed valuation uh, increased 5.4% um, uh, in, uh, uh, on average uh, for our residential property homeowners. So that's the average. Um, this slide is intended to show what uh, specific parcels in our district. And in each of these four instances, um, the actual tax paid that is being projected is 13 and a half percent uh, is the increase. Again, the largest portion of that being those um, uh, being borne by the increase of the m and override. Uh, and then the last slide I have to share is the truth and taxation notice. Um, this was, uh, this is part of the hearing as well. Uh, this is a result of us levying uh, adjacent ways, uh, $500,000 in adjacent ways funds for the uh, next modernization project, which will be um, yet to be determined, but the recommendation from the Building Capacity Usage Committee is going to be to modernize the Desert Sky Middle School campus. <coughs> um, so at this point, uh, whenever we levy adjacent ways funds, we have a truth and taxation notice requirement that needs to be met. This is the actual notice. It has been published. and. Um, so it says if we, if, we, um, if we did not levy any taxes uh, for adjacent ways, the tax would be zero, um, that uh, second paragraph. Uh, but since we are levying a half a million dollars, the annualized tax that is being paid for that half a million dollars is uh, $2.17 for a $100,000 home. Uh, so with that, this is a public hearing. I can answer any questions. Um, that the board might have uh, in, in regards to the adopted budget, uh, but we do need to open it up to the public to also comment as well. Okay, I'll open it up to the public first. Is if there's anybody here that wishes to speak on the items listed or item that Mr. Miglarino just went over, step up to the podium, speak your name clearly. Seeing none. Um, Let's move on to the next item. Or, excuse me, any board members have questions? Uh, Jim, I, I do have a lot of questions regarding, or a lot of questions and concerns and comments regarding the administrative recommendations for reclassifications and additions. Do you want that done uh, in the public meeting, or is it better to do it at the time of the actual meeting? Uh, President Gregoire, uh, Ms. Fisher, I, uh, it'd be at the pleasure of the board. I mean, it can be done now. Does the board have a preference of when the questions are asked? Okay. Um, looking at the reclassifications and the additions that we have, um, in April of 2014-15, the district did a reorganization, a, a large portion of which included uh, many of these same areas. Um, and at that time, there were uh, reclassifications and additional raises and, and changes that were made um, to the tune of, it shows a, a cost negative because things were moved around, um, but to individuals it was not, okay? And when I'm looking at this, uh, I understand where you show that the projected M&O cost is 153,245, but the total cost to all funds is 295,000. 363, correct? That is correct. So 
it, it truly is almost a $300,000 hit to our budget in total, not just m and correct? Th that is correct. Okay. Um, now, some of these class reclassifications um, are really clear. They're, they're, they're just needed. Um, the, the athletics director um, increase, you know, our, honestly, our auditors recommended that we have a full-time person. I understand that one. Any of the um, salaried range three had to be moved to four because we had to meet the federal uh, requirement, correct? Uh, President Gregoire, Ms. Fisher, so anybody that was in range four uh, would need to be increased, their salary would need to be increased uh, because we increased the Right, so we increased four. range four and then we dropped off one, two, and three. So anybody who's currently in three has to be put in four or be put hourly, correct? Um, correct. Okay. It, now, well, it's, it, and and I'm, I'm not trying to mince words with you, but we did have a couple people in range three that actually met the salary requirements. So it's not everybody in range three, but... Okay, but, but that, that's the reason th these are on here, correct? Right. Okay. Now, I did notice um, that we're going from three to five on at least one of them. And there was two, but I think the other one... Either you, either it's been moved or changed. So now we're just having one that's actually jumping a step. Um, and I did look at, um, we did, I did request that we see the job description, and I requested that we have a justification for the reasons of why, um, which we were provided in the Friday update. Um, at the time, I did not have the job description. Um, since I did receive it and I, and I looked at the job description and the additional duties are right in line with the job description. So again, I am confused why we're jumping a step. Um, the additional duties um, aren't additional, they're in the job description. Um, so that's one concern on, on that one specific. Could, could you tell us what you're talking about, what position you're talking about because it's a yes. little abstract right now. Uh, the school ops specialist. Okay. Okay. And um, if I'm not, I'm sorry for interrupting, um, uh, President Gregoire, Ms. Fisher. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think we sent you just the current job description. Yeah, you sent me the current job description. When we when we talk, you said that that they would need to write an additional job description um, if it was approved. So you sent me the current job description. In the current job description, currently at a level three, it contains what would be these additional duties. They would fall in line with the current existing job description. So I can understand moving it to a four because we have to. We have to meet those federal guidelines. Um, I do not understand why we're moving it to a five. Um, the other cost is that we're increasing it to a 12 months which is totally in line with the job description. Um, so, so I understand making it a 12 month and I understand going up the one step, but the, the additional job duties are not additional based on the current job description. So I guess I'm confused at why the extra step. Uh, and President Gregoire, uh, Ms. Fisher, so my understanding is I don't think that we've included, uh, we have not been able to share with you or, or the board um, what those additional responsibilities are going to be. It was because in our we have Friday update or Thursday update. Yeah. Um, it, not, not formalized in the in that, a that's revised correct. job the, description. The, the job descriptions have not been changed, but you, you received the added tasks that will be included. We, we obviously, we aren't going to change the job, job description if, in fact, um, the change is not approved by the board. Correct. Yeah. We rec I, have the, I have the current job description. Right. I have the list from the supervisor of the additional duties that this person will now be doing. My, con my question is, the, c the new duties that this job will be doing are included in the current job description. So they're already encompassed in that. They're either not, may, they may not be exactly worded the same, but the premise is the same. Um, so I'm confused as to why the extra jump on that one. Um, my other concern, when I look at this, 
Um, I looked at, because it's, part of what made me uneasy about this is that we should not be giving additional raises just to give them. And we had that conversation. I understand that there is uh, sometimes duties that go out of line, but then I started thinking, okay, well, what about our processes and our procedures? Um, I, I'm only familiar with what two other districts do, um, which would be Glendale L or Phoenix Union. And when they're going to have a complete reclassification of positions like this, generally what they'll do is they'll reclassify an entire department or, or positions. They will have the, um, anyone who wants to apply for the positions, they'll open them up internally only to allow people to apply. They would have to surrender their job and, and if, if they got it, and they would have to go to the new position. That's standard for those two districts. So I kind of questioned what our process was. And, and, and I found our process, both in the handbook and in the AMGs, which says the same thing. We should, if we're going, if we really need tech two positions, we should open tech two positions. We should um, o open them and post for transfer. Uh, the, we should send the recruitment to the HR specialist. The position must be posted on the BVOSD job posting for at least three days. Um, we have a process to do this type of thing, and yet we have not done it. So I I'm curious as to why we're not following our employee handbook. We're not following our AMGs. We're adding additional funds into positions that we, in, in departments, that we added additional funds to in April of 2014-15. It, it does not make sense to me, and, and I really, um, I, I will say I was a little bit uh, insulted that when I started doing research, I realized the prior board in 14-15 was actually provided an executive session to discuss these things. Um, and, uh, and we're getting this last minute and surprise talk about it here, which I don't like talking about HR matters attached to employees in public. Um, so I do have an issue. I don't understand the dollars um, of all of them. And I don't like telling the public that this is a $153,000 um, item when it's almost a $300,000 item just because it's not all M&O. Um, so, so those are, are, I guess, some of the explanations I, I if you have an answer for, I would, I would really like. Uh, President Craig Brower, uh, Ms. Fisher, uh, in regards to the process that we follow, uh, we do have a prescribed process that we follow in both the facilities and the IST department. Uh, one's called an apprentice program, one's called a change of designation program. Um, I believe the reference that you're making to in the handbook uh, is for open positions, so there isn't and an new. Op yeah, open positions that, that aren't filled. And uh, new positions, correct. Uh, okay. And, and uh, um, so that would be posted. In this case, we actually have a, a, an employee in a position, and we are reclassifying them to a new position. So, um, Okay, but um, when I went to look into these, these programs, in fact, in, even you provided us a, a, a very well-written uh, statement of your memory of how these were done, but we don't have a formal board adopted program that I can find or any uh, a formal uh, process that's been um, blessed by administration, by the board, by really, it, there's no formal process. Um, I mean, I, I really appreciate the document you put together that told us what you remember a discussion that you had had and why it was being done this way, but, um, we will now have multiple positions that we didn't have before, and we will have, and, and yes, the old positions will go away, but we have teachers that stand before us at every one of these meetings that says, I can't live on $37,000. And if we're gonna open up a position 
that's potentially going to pay $50,000, who's to say they may not want to apply for it? It's, it's, I think we are about to open up an HR nightmare by doing this. And, I, and, I, and I'm very concerned, not only about the bottom line and the message we're sending out to the public about the responsibility of the funds that they have voted. This was very a controversial year. They voted for an override. They voted for one, two, three. They expect that we are responsible with their money. And, and I have to, when I stand before one of the LD, I, I was at an LD meeting last night. They called me and said, can you come? I guarantee next month a different LD will say, can you come? And I want to be able to stand in front of them and say, I know it's hard, I know you vote, and I know it's hard to, to ask for more money all the time, but I want you to know how responsible Deer Valley is with the funds that you have been so gracious to allow us to have. And, so, and I want to thank them for letting us educate their children. I can't do that seeing this. Can I jump in here? I want to address the ISNT part. And because um, this is my 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 ground here, um, you cannot just open up a tech position and expect somebody from outside to come in and fill and do the job. And the reason being is many of these positions have custom written software. Much of what we do has been custom written, and there'd be a huge learning curve for a new person to come in and try to understand what the previous programmer was doing. And with that, you would, you would be expending tons of hours of non-progressive work. So what, we, what they've done here in ISNT is trying to grow their techs. So they bring them in at a lower level with very little computer science knowledge, and they develop them on our systems. And they become familiar with our specific systems. So as they grow, and in this case, they're moving from tech range 30 to 38, they're getting more knowledge, on-the-job knowledge, work experience, plus they're learning our custom systems. So when we do have, um, if we did, for instance, let's just take a real example. I work for a company, Scout, and half the ISNT department just left. We're dead in the water because we could hire all new techs, but they're not going to get up to speed for another six months to figure out what the the, the six guys that left before them. So um, this method of growing our own is not only do we get a, a discount rate on what these guys normally get paid, of course everybody is underpaid in this district, so don't get me wrong, but we get guys that are familiar with our systems and our stuff work so we don't have to retrain somebody new coming in. So the way that we've been doing here is the best and most efficient way to keep what we have going. Michael, I understand the need to, um, to, to build your own when it comes to um, technology people. I do understand that. My first career was in technology. Um, I also understand human resources. And I know that you have six techs, eight techs, ten techs, and you're going to just move a tech and not open it. You are now... Um, um, you're setting yourself up. So it's, I'm not saying that necessarily we shouldn't, just, I'm just saying we need to look at what we're doing and we need to follow an appropriate process. And as far as, as our pay, um, we are right in line with, with, currently, before anything, we are in line with what Glendale L's paying. And the last several board meetings, we have said that we're losing teachers to Phoenix Union because we can't pay them what Phoenix Union can, we're right in line with Phoenix Union as well. So again, I am concerned that we need to, I'm not saying not do it, because some of it may very well be very relevant and very justified, but I'm saying we need to do it right. We need to not just throw something in because with little data, little, little, little research, little reason behind. We need to follow an appropriate process, have clean documentation. And then at that point, it, what's justified, absolutely we do. And then when an employee who 
feels that maybe they should have gotten a position or they should have gotten and they want to pursue it legally, we have documentation as to why we did what we did. We have shown that we have managed our funds and our staff appropriately because our staff, staff for any school district is our greatest asset and our greatest expense. So I'm not saying that we shouldn't do it. I'm saying that we should put the brakes on and at least look at it and make sure we do it right. Make sure that we get, uh, make sure what we're doing is in line with what we should be doing. It's in line with the process, with our process. And, and if, if ISNT needs to reorganize again, then we do that. But two years ago, we already did that. And not only Ms. Fisher, we do that on an annual basis. So that, uh, no, if, you, if you would like to talk more about two years ago, I'd be happy to do that. I, uh, I, I also would like to uh, share with the, those in the audience as well as everywhere else that between two years ago and this year, mm -hmm. we cut $2.3 million out of the district office. Absolutely you might remember that in that budget process. Yeah, we did. So, so we, we are at a place very much unlike where we were when a $14,000 salary adjustment was made two years ago. James, I understand and, that. But and when additionally, I might add, we paid $25,000 for an exterior review to tell us that we are staffed 28% lower at the district office than any of our comparable districts. So I when, understand that, but that does it, if, if you let me finish. When we went two years ago, we took our ISNT department, which was fairly flat. We gave it a new org chart, which is no longer flat. Now, in addition to the funds that we are, are the, the adjustments we're making in the, the positions and the salaries, we're also going to change our director to a CIO position. We're now going to have a CIO reporting to a CEO, which is is they're, they're almost equivalent level position, so we're essentially throwing that in. And the purpose, the only purpose to do that would be because you have a director one and a director two, and the next step is to bring in an additional director. And I do understand that we are going to be losing some very high quality talent, and we should replace it with very high quality talent as well, but that doesn't mean we make the department taller and taller. So I'm, I'm looking at what we did two years ago, what we're doing here, and the process, and what looks like a planned future, and I'm concerned. And I think the public has, uh, well, they, they elected us not just to hire a superintendent and let him do his job, they hired us to represent them and ask the questions of what we're doing, and and that's what I'm and that's what I'm asking. And and, and there's certainly we're, we certainly invite that and appreciate that. I just I think there's a a, a very significant uh, and important addition that needs to be made, and that is the fact that we are operating significantly beneath anyone in in up to and including the two districts that you mentioned uh, from an administrative and support perspective 28 percent that's pretty significant it's awesome um, that we're running efficient and 2.3 million dollar direct reduction is a pretty significant reduction so um, uh, it was not outside of any process that we went through this recommendation for the governing board and uh, we, we stand by it, and, and we, we hope that you would support us when we tell you these are the specific areas that we have need. I, if that's not the case, then um, you I know, th let the governing board Honestly, speak. I think if this, I do think if this, is, if this is what the district administration wants to do, okay, we are going to be looking at the budget to adopt a budget. <coughs> There isn't a reason that we couldn't adopt the budget with a dollar amount because the, the budget is is corrected or throughout the year and then have okay. a discussion the, about the discussion these. about changing in the next so, meeting is for the next meeting you've made the points that you have made are I, there I, any michael, other new points michael i am sorry but i am so tired of of the the board members being silent so that we don't say something in public that is relevant to exactly what we're talking about. You are talking about changing no. the number of the All budget. All I'm saying which is, 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 if is this is what meeting. no, if this is what we need to do, 
if this is what we need to do, and, you, and, and administration firmly believes this is what we need to do, there isn't a reason we couldn't put the brakes on it as it sits and then and, and, and consider it, and then if need be, whatever passes is retro paid back. So there are options. I'm not saying that we need to stop completely. I'm just saying that we need to take a clean, clear look at what we're doing and not just have 20 minutes on a dais to make a $300,000 decision with taxpayer dollars. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Any other comments? Okay, Mr. Bear. Okay. I, I think it's kind of interesting that you mentioned that two years ago we shaved two point what? It was last year. It was last okay. year. Last year. Okay. And because of that, then we got this good rating from the efficiency expert, right? Is that not right? I'm, I'm sorry, good, a good rating? What, well, do, you, that, what do you mean? That we were understaffed comparatively, I think is what you said. Due to budget reductions, the district has reduced administrative staffing allocations. The district currently staffs approximately 28% fewer district office administrative positions than comparison districts. That's what the report said. All right, so that was because of the reductions that happened a year ago. So now we're wanting to just build those back up to where they were before? $2.3 million um, and compared to 153,000, I wouldn't call that building back up. I would say we were filling holes that we created over the course of the previous seven years. Okay, any other comments? Yes, Mrs. O'Brien. I'm gonna go last, Michael. Um, I have a point of clarification. Is the public hearing for the public to make comments on and governing board discussion to be held during the agenda item during the meeting? It, it was actually either or. The public, we invited the public already and there were no takers, so uh, the board can make comments as well, but uh, again, when we're talking about whether we're going to change an item on the agenda for a type of a vote, that's for the next meeting, and that's what I was alluding to. So we're we're just talking about the the current budget as Jim uh, iterated for us. Did I did I make that clear? Okay. Anything else, Ann? Okay, Mrs. Yes. Overboy. Yes. Ms. McLarina, when you uh, and I guess uh, Dr. Weitenheimer and Cabinet, because I believe that this probably went through that whole process, um, the process to look at these positions where you looked at positions, um, not people, but the positions and the tasks that were needed, um, what kind of a, a process did you go? Because it, I, I want you to explain not necessarily the step-by-step, step, but to me, I think it was a very um, intentional laser focus. What do we need to continue these departments um, serving our district? As ISNT in particular and school operations touches every single portion of our district. So could you kind of explain that process? Uh, certainly, President Gregoire, uh, Ms. Wardway, the, uh, the, the process that we followed actually goes back to the development of the uh, list of budget fixes, um, and that's the terminology that we used, uh, where we solicited uh, input from uh, not only through the NST process, but uh, through uh, cabinet level uh, positions for um, suggestions for things to include in the 2016-2017 budget. As a result of uh, that process, uh, that list was taken back into um, cabinet and we reviewed the list uh, specifically related to personnel. Uh, related to the change of designation and apprentice, um, there are some timelines that are built into those processes uh, in which they were followed. Uh, they have to provide us with a notice uh, in advance. Um, in the case of the apprentice program, there's a, a test that has to be administered um, and all of those processes were followed. Uh, outside of the list of budget fixes because we have another prescribed process for each of those um, uh, two different reclassification processes, both the apprentice and change of designation processes. So um, those were, were, that list was merged. Uh, 
and with the list of budget fixes. And as was presented to the governing board, not everything that was on the list that cabinet had recommended even made, uh, made the list. So there was a line that we drew at one point in time and said this is all that we're willing to endorse. Uh, and that's ultimately the, the list that, uh, uh, and, and the list went through some refinements, um, admittedly, even since the June 28th meeting uh, due to some input that we received. Um, but ultimately the list that we present to you this evening is what we're recommending. So follow up to that would be when the department um, people uh, figured out, decided upon, these are definitely the things that we need to continue to move forward. Um, that process and those um, employees that were needed in said positions, do you cross check, double check that with human resources to make sure that when we are doing this reclassification um, due to whether it was the federal um, labor laws that we had to uh, come into line with or, or, or for whatever reason, do we make sure that we are checking with a, the HR department that we are doing this um, not only within our district's uh, rules, but also with employment rules outside of the district that govern us both state and federal? Um, President Gregoire, Ms. Wardway, yes. Uh, in fact, HR is part of the process all along the way. They, they sit in cabinet. So would it be, well, it might not be fair to ask you, but do you feel that this process was not something that was uh, pulled out of the air, that each and every one of these reclassifications um, is justified and the rationale is for our district to move forward within the most efficient and effective way that we can? Um, I think it's irrelevant what I feel. Um, this is the recommendation that the uh, administration okay, has made. Okay, administration wise. Okay. Uh, I think we should offer the pub. Does anybody else want to speak before we close this little piece? Linda? Or Linda, then Jerry? Speak your full name and then go. Governing Board members, my name is Linda Slavic, and I'm a certified teacher on NST. The NST members were told at our last meeting in May that we would be emailed a survey to rank our priorities with the remaining Proposition 123 funds. We were never sent an email seeking our opinion. At the last board meeting, I was shocked to hear that our district was trying to reclassify so many district office positions. Many of these were listed on the district's wish list. We need to honor the NST process, so I am hoping that the board will t table classifying positions until NST can meet or complete our promise survey. NST members need to be able to express their concerns and make a recommendation to you at a later date. Perhaps we should bring back our former IB and loopout meetings where all employees can attend and watch the process. I am still receiving emails from upset teachers who are not getting paid for their master's degree or years of experience. They are questioning me about why I would agree to this. Not one meeting that I attended was there any discussion that the employees must have received their master's degree while working in Deer Valley. Also, no one mentioned that years of experience in Deer Valley had to be consecutive. Yet, HR is telling teachers that this is the agreement that NST reached. If we had loop out meetings, this would help with transparency. I cannot believe that there is not enough money to pay teachers for their years of experience or for the professional development hours as we agreed upon, yet we have plenty of money to reclassify district office employees. I would have loved a $1,200 salary increase on top of a 2.5% raise like these district office employees already received. Why should these employees get an additional 2 to, tw two to 24% on top of what everybody else gets? I do not agree with rewarding district office employees for their hard work while ignoring all the other hardworking employees who work in this district. Governing board members, please do not approve these um, reclassifying positions tonight until NST has a chance to discuss. Please let us follow procedures. Okay. President Gregoire, board members, uh, Dr. Weidenheimer, I just wanted to say that I worked in the uh, computer business and I'm sorry, is it on now? Okay. I worked in the computer business for 40 years. 35 years ago, I was in charge of three offices in three states. I didn't have one engineer 
that worked for me that was paid less than $45,000, and that's 35 years ago. I think it's quite amazing the job that you're getting done with your IS&T staff for what they're getting paid. For instance, my salary to $50,000 for what I know is involved in an engineering position for computers, uh, you're, you're getting services that are amazing for the port you're paying. So you're not, those are really much more specified positions than people give, are giving them credit for. Um, I, I know this from, for a fact. So it, it, that's, that's 35 years ago. You've been getting amazing things done for, obviously, I didn't even know what they were being paid, but I can't imagine you're getting the, the service that you're getting for what you're paying. $50,000 is really nothing. So you just can, should take it into consideration that the people that are asking for these additional amounts of money are not asking for, in my opinion, anything that's, out, that's outrageous. I, I think it's that they're getting something done that's providing you with a lot of service for pennies. Thank you. Thank you. And excuse me, one more thing. You have to speak your name to the microphone just for posterity. Jerry Dobbs. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Okay. Uh, with that, we will move on to the next item, public hearing on truth and taxation. taxation. Uh, President Gregoire, um, we covered that with the uh, uh, previous information uh, that when we talked about the taxes. The only uh, item we have left is, is the insurance proceed. Okay. Um, is there anyone that cares to speak on, on that piece, the truth in taxation, the tax, the new tax rates? Anyone? Do we have any comments from any board members? Seeing none, we'll move on to the next item. Uh, President Gregoire, members of the board, Dr. Feinheimer, um, uh, Arizona Revised Statute uh, 151103 requires us to have a public hearing in order to be able to sp uh, expend funds from the insurance proceeds. Um, uh, revenue is generated in the insurance proceeds when we have a, um, um, a claim that we settle and so that we don't lose budget capacity uh, with our limited budget uh, that is prescribed by statute. Uh, we can deposit the funds into this specific fund, but we can only expend those funds if we have a hearing. Uh, so this is that hearing uh, so that we can expend those funds for, uh, you know, throughout the course of next year. Uh, we are projecting a $15,000 beginning balance in the fund, uh, approximately $85,000 worth of claims, and that is, um, I'll, an estimate of what we think might be realistic. Uh, so we are projecting that we might need to spend up to $100,000 uh, in the fund. Uh, that's what we're including in the plan that will be considered during the regular meeting that will be immediately following this hearing. Okay, with that, uh, is there anybody in the public that wishes to speak on this? Seeing none, any board member comments? Seeing none, can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn the executive for this uh, public meeting. Second. Uh, those in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Okay, so let's not go anywhere. Let's get, get into right into the public meeting. We're already late, so. Um, call to order of the regular meeting of the governing board at 7.33. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Four members are here physically. Uh, Mrs. O'Brien, you still there? I am. Okay, so all members are present. Can I have a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Motion to adopt the agenda. Is there any? Second. With, with a couple changes, oh. I'm sorry. Oh, Let me yeah. review those quickly. Uh, that would be night item 9D uh, to remove admin reclassifications and new hire exempt. Um, and the recommendation would be to put this for separate consideration. Right. Second. Um, all those in favor? Yes. No, just. No. He, he wants to make a special motion, a mo vote for the reclassification. So um, I'm calling the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those against, nay. Nay. We're so, not even going to do a separate consideration of them? No, we're not. A vote two to three. Here goes the rubber stamp. 
Mrs. Fisher, I, I'm really, your comments are out of order. So is your behavior, sir. Mr. Bear, could you, I'll make the motion. Uh, I would uh, move that we adopt the agenda as, as printed. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 No. All those against? No. Three, two. Okay, there are no awards and achievements in record, so we'll go to board reports and we'll go directly to Mrs. Fisher. Well, I've been uh, very busy the last two weeks looking into um, the history of what we are, what you are going to do tonight and um, gathering data and information and facts from other districts and job descriptions and reviewing all the things that we should have reviewed for the last several weeks. And that was very fun, um, stressful, but fun. And uh, I did spend some time with a couple of legislative districts um, up to LD1 and with members from LD15 um, who are very excited to watch um, our recording tonight and, uh, and get an update on the status um, of what it is we're going to do here tonight. And uh, aside that, from that, I'm just getting ready for the start of the new school year. Okay, Mrs. Ordway. Well, I see that we're going to be welcoming back employees soon, right? Does that mean summer's over in a couple of weeks? Um, I would want I, I want to make a request, um, possibly for our next study session, to think about um, creating um, a process for onboarding um, newly elected board members for the time in between November and January when we. Um, when the when the persons persons would be sworn in, so we have something um, that we can go by. We've been trying to do that for a couple of years, and I don't think we've gotten around to it. So I think it would behoove us to have an actual process um, to onboard new board members. Also, um, do we have uh, when when will we find out um, when we're thinking about scheduling that study session? Does just a question. Can someone uh, answer that? Well, it's, it's, <laughs> uh, it's off the agenda topic, so we'll, we'll get it to you. Though. Okay, so, okay. all right, so then another request would be to get uh, okay. a couple of dates for the study session that we're going to have. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Bear. No report this evening. Mrs. O'Brien. <laughs> yes, yes, sorry. Yeah. You're Okay, for posterity, I have n for shortness, I'll no report as well. Superintendent? No report tonight. Okay, let's move on to item 7A. Consider to approve the slated November 22nd, 2016 governing board meeting for cancellation and the May 23rd governing board meeting for a reschedule to May 30th. Do I have a motion? Mr. Bear, can you read the motion? Yeah, sorry. Thank you, Mr. President. Item 7A, I move that the governing board approve the slated November 22nd, 2016 regular governing board meeting for cancellation and the May 23rd, 2017 regular governing board meeting rescheduled for May 30, 2017. Second. Somebody want to offer a brief explanation so everybody understands what we're doing? Uh, I can do that real quickly. The uh, first meeting is the uh, Tuesday before the Wednesday break at Thanksgiving. And the second meeting, which is the May 30th meeting, is being rescheduled to facilitate the uh, promotion ceremonies at our um, K-8 and middle schools. Okay. So any other Comments from the board and seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, item 7B, approve the 2016-17 extracurricular tax credit and fee authorization. Did I, Mr. Bear, make a motion. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the governing board accept the administration's recommendation to approve the 2016-17 extracurricular tax credit and fee authorization. Second. All those in favor? Any comments for 
Seeing none, all those in I have one question Go ahead. Me for Jim. Jim, because uh, I, I know the legislature changed that we don't have to charge a fee to accept tax credit. Are we going to phase that out in the coming year? Are you, I, I'm getting a sense in, in, in that, that, that it makes people <coughs> uncomfortable to phase it out. I don't know why, but. Uh, President Gregoire, Ms. Fisher, uh, we had a practice of charging $1 uh, for each high school student, um, and that uh, could be waived as a hardship, uh, as is also required by the law. Uh, we have removed that uh, for the 16-17 school year. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Item 7C, approve the 16-17 classroom site fund. Mr. Bear, make a motion. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the governing board accept the administration's recommendation to approve the revised 2016-2017 classroom site fund plan. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, any comments? Discussion. Discussion. Mr. Bear, you want to? Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Miglarino, um, is there anything on this that we didn't approve in our prior meetings? Um, President Gregoire and Mr. Bear, um, this uh, what's being displayed here are the four things that we uh, have altered since this was uh, previously approved. So we modified the plan to exclude the 3.0 um, FTE or full-time equivalent uh, world language teachers. We added back in seven FTE of English language learner staff. Uh, five of those are techs, two of those are teachers. Uh, we included the reclassification of the assessment clerk, uh, which is on uh, the agenda for future consideration with the HR changes. And then we included uh, an allocation specifically for high school math and reading interventions, um, $40,000. So that altered the AIMS uh, intervention line um, that you see here as uh, $1.1 million. Um, it was previously approved at uh, $995,000 uh, back on June 28th. And the AIMS intervention what exactly are we doing with that? Um, it includes a whole host of things to provide um, what we would like to refer to as assessment interventions now, uh, since Ames is limited to just science, um, that we uh, uh, have provided. We have an entire list of those items that we can that we've uh, shared with the board and could previously, or we previously shared with the board that we could certainly provide to you again. <coughs> That we were uh, done with AIMS. Um, the AIMS science still exists, and uh, in the statute, there are um, the six items that can be spent from the menu items. It, AIMS intervention is still listed that way. Um, so we're hanging on to AIMS science, but there is another assessment, AZ Merit. And um, so, again, that is kind of left over in the statute. Um, that's why we leave it that way uh, in what we're presenting here, but it really is assessment intervention. That would appear to be a little bit misleading. Can we rename that correctly or not? not um, no. President Gregoire, Mr. Bear, the, the, it's in statute, so we don't have the authority to change that, but the legislature certainly could. Okay. Okay, uh, any other comments? <laughs> Actually, I do have one, and this is, this classroom site fund has been, uh, Let's just say it's been contested, talked about for a long time. I would ask that the, uh, that we form a committee and discuss for the future budgets on how this is going to be allocated. Um, it's always been a bone of contention with many people, and we have not ever addressed this in eight years, nine years, since I can remember anyway, um, that we talk about this further and get stakeholders involved in this conversation. So. That would be my only request since we're on that topic. It has nothing to do with the vote, but. I actually, uh, um, I would actually like to thank Jim for, um, for, for listening and, and, and reviewing the, the same uh, data that I was looking at and realizing that it, it may not be best to put those others, and I really appreciate you. Um, I appreciate you as a business manager, and I appreciate the knowledge you provide, and I thank you for removing those off of this and uh, making sure what we're doing is legal. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Let's move on to the consent agenda.
Mr. President, I move that the governing board accept the administration's recommendation to approve consent agenda items 8A through 8I. So Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, item 9A. Uh, before we bring this up, we're going to have two public speakers speak, but we'll make the motion first and then we'll invite the speakers to come up. Uh, Mr. Bear, could you make that motion? Yes, sir. One moment. I move that the governing board accept the administration's recommendation to adopt the 2016 17 expenditure budget. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, with that, we have two speakers. Suzanne, Susan Peck and Deanna Sandquist, in that order, we'll go, come up to the microphone and speak your piece. Say your name and then you have three minutes. Oh, before we do, Mr. Bear, could you read the admonition? I'm sorry, it's just procedural. Certainly. Go ahead. The board invites public comment on the district's business in general and on any agenda item in specific. All speakers must observe the rules of decorum. Speakers must fill out a card listing their name, address, and the topic, and hand it to the board secretary prior to the president calling the meeting to order. Speakers must make their comments in no more than three minutes. If necessary to accommodate, if necessary to accommodate all speakers within the 30 minute overall limit, the board president may shorten each speaker's time Constructive criticism is in order. Rudeness, vulgarity, disruptive conduct, or remarks disrespecting personal dig dignity are not in order and will not be allowed. Under the Arizona Open Meeting Law, the Governing Board cannot discuss or act on any items not listed on the agenda. Board members may respond to criticism made by a speaker, ask staff to review a matter, or ask that a matter be put on a future agenda. Okay, go ahead and state your name and go, then. Go My ahead. name is Susan Peck. My purpose for speaking is to represent the veteran teachers like myself who did not fairly benefit from the salary adjustments as a result of Prop 123, as well as represents parents in our community. It's very difficult to justify in my own mind and therefore to parents how an inexperienced teacher who has demonstrated little to no loyalty in the DVUSD is receiving thousands more in a salary increase than a teacher who has many more years vested in the district. I absolutely understand that DVUSD has a flawed salary schedule compared to neighboring districts due to past and present addendums for hard to fill positions and awarding years of experience to some teachers and not to others. Because of these inequities, Deer Valley needed to make adjustments in order to attract more teachers or to even out the disparity. But this should never have been done at the indifference toward all veteran teachers who weathered frozen salaries and salary reductions over the past nine years. As a result of Prop 123, my salary was 17 years vested in the district and 26 years of teaching the experience overall went up $500. It's actually embarrassing to admit that after 26 years, I have not even reached the 50,000 mark. Teachers do communicate in this district and I'm fully aware of less experienced teachers receiving more and in order for DB, 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 Deer Valley to appear more competitive. What is concerning is that they have not shown loyalty or competency. In fact, my school has a CIT committee that is comprised of four veteran teachers, including myself, all who received just $500 from Prop 123. How do I justify that to the community? Peoria proposed a 6.8 increase to base salary and a one-time increase of 5.33% for certified staff and teachers as referenced in the yesprop123.com for public viewing. Out of 30 of the surrounding districts listed, Deer Valley chose not to publicly disclose their information about the proposals during that election. According to the Arizona Department of Ed 2014 data, 46% of new teachers actually leave the profession within their first five years and it takes three to five years for new teachers to become effective in their instruction. So don't you think you should focus more on rewarding all teachers? Just three years ago, Deer Valley was quoted in an article from the Arizona Republic about taking strides to make sure that new hires didn't make more than experienced teachers. As a result of this proposed schedule, that gap is beginning to get smaller and smaller. I'm also a parent and a voter in this district and I do not believe we have done our homework with regard to dispersing these newly acquired funds equitably. 
Think about the future and how the community will react when they know that once again a proposition was passed and Deer Valley did not use these funds as the voters intended. In closing, I'm deeply disappointed with how DVSD has allocated the funds from Prop 123. And my hope is that this allocation of funds can be looked at again and an attempt will be made to recognize veteran teachers who have weathered the funding challenges and remain loyal to the district. Thank you. Deanna Sanquist. I know that I'm a low talker. I'm Deanna Sanquist. If you don't hear me, please give me a visual cue. Um, first, I want to state, because the first thing that I prepared was how I wanted that AIMS allocation to be further outlined and explored. So I thank you for bringing clarity um, to that dialogue, because that was something that I was concerned about, because I'm on a K-8 campus where it's no longer administered, nor has it been for several years. But I do understand that high school is a different entity, so I did appreciate you bringing that to light. Um, it was meaningful for me to see the data collected in the employee survey uh, was discussed at the last board meeting that I had attended. It was Governing Bohr, uh, Bear that requested that exit surveys be considered as relevant data points, um, is that it's um, provided from HR. Um, I can tell you, having seen more than 40% attrition rates in my department, this is relevant conversations to be having. It is relevant discussions, and I can tell you that several individuals who have decided to leave employment in Deer Valley had disclosed that they chose to leave and were candid in their um, exit surveys. So I'm hoping that Deer Valley will utilize this information in its honesty and with integrity to help maintain employment in Deer Valley. So I appreciated that coming to light as well. I do continue to have concerns regarding the exclusion of some staff members from Prop 123 funding. I believe that all individuals work to support students' needs that are critical to the success of our students, regardless of their position. I did want to highlight it, that it is some of the same individuals that have been excluded from Prop 123 raises that actually recover funding for the district from their ability to bill Medicaid for medical services. I would love to know the exact amount recovered by the district for services rendered by these professionals and information on how to access that data would be appreciated. When we talk about employment in Deer Valley, there's a few simple threads that seem to be relevant and it is a lack of trust. Um, and I do believe that there's a lack of trust because I can tell you from a personal perspective, an email was sent out indicating that I would be a part of a raise because I'm a certified staff. Then several other emails were sent out with retractions or vague explanations as to why I'm not going to be getting a raise. Um, and so it leads to mistrust. If there's ineffective communication, if we aren't transparent, it makes and fosters distrust. I think that transparency will be critical moving forward. Having open dialogue and considering actual data will be very critical, and being open and respectful and working together will be very relevant as well. Um, it may be really relevant, as Ms. Peck had also mentioned, to consider how other school districts have chosen to honor and support their employees. Even though legislation chose to exclude some disciplines, the reality is those districts chose to invest in all employees because they value all employees. In order to affect attrition rates within this district, it will be critical to build employee trust, which can occur by creating transparency systems readily available for all employees. Post-salary schedules would be very beneficial. Reinstate a step system, as many other districts have done, in order to accommodate okay. for inflationary General costs to Rapper. employees. I'm done. OK, thank you very much. OK, with that, do we have any board comments on the uh, expenditure budget? Seeing none, call yes, Mrs. Fisher. Jim, if we adopt the expenditure budget and do not adopt the, adjust, the uh, adjustments at this time, it can be changed at a later date, correct? Because this is just revision one. Uh, President Gregoire, Ms. Fisher, that is correct. Thank you. Uh, they are included in the adopted budget, but the adopted budget um, will likely be revised um, at least once, if not multiple times through the year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Miglarino, in the uh, 
the budget that we're looking at passing at this point. Um, that includes the one, two, three plan, correct? President Gregoire, Mr. Baird, that is correct. Okay. Um, in that one, two, three plan, um, is there anything included in that, that that we didn't approve already, like uh, world language teachers or assistant principals? Were they? Were that? Was that part of the one, two, three? Uh, President Greg, where, uh, Mr. Bear, uh, so we did include uh, some assistant principals and um, TOAs, teachers on assignments, in um, from the Prop 123 funds, as well as a $57,000 allocation for uh, adjustments to principal inconsistencies in their salaries. Uh, that was part of the uh, original approval. And when we moved the um, world language teachers out of the classroom site fund, they're back in the M&O budget. You could make an argument that the Prop 123 is part of the M&O budget. Um, so um, you could make an argument that it is part of that. I seem to remember that those items weren't, wasn't that part of the requirements list that you had? Uh, Mr. Bear, that's correct. And didn't we, at that meeting, get rid of that? Or not vote for um, that? My recollection of what was approved was an allocation of $750,000 to be able to um, address the list of requirements, which was uh, virtually uh, $1.5 million, $1.4 million, something like that. Okay. Any other questions? None. Seeing none. Call the vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those against? Nay. Nay. World War I. Uh, item 9B, approve the levy increased primary property tax. This is a roll call vote, so we'll take them one at a time. Read it? Yeah, make the motion, Mr. Bear. Thank you. I move that the governing board accept the administration's recommendations to levy the increased primary property tax of the district to pay for increased expenditures over the state imposed spending limit second second before I call the vote um, I'm just gonna say my piece um, much of this was uh, because of the the generosity of the voters in this district uh, the reason we have a 15% override is because the voters approved that which unfortunately raises the tax rate and I just want to make that abundantly clear, although we did call for the vote, and I'll be on record as saying that I did think, do think we need more money for the school, for our employees. Um, I just want to make it clear, too, that I think our community does, too. So with that being said, I'm going to call the, a roll vote. I'll start with you, Mrs. O'Brien. Yay or nay? Yay. Mr. Bear. You abstain. Okay, I'll vote yes. Mrs. Fisher. I would like to preface my vote by saying that um, um, it, I believe it was made clear that the additional 5% would increase our tax rate. Um, and I know that's very uncomfortable, but it was very necessary, and I thank the voters for it, and I will vote yes. I will just say that I'm proud that Deer Valley voters view education as an investment and not an expense. So I vote yes. So it is four with one abstention. Okay, item 9C, approve the use of insurance proceeds. Mr. Bear, can I have a motion? Certainly. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the governing board accept the administration's recommendation to approve the use of insurance proceeds for fiscal year 2016 17. Do you have a second? Second. Any conversation? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, item 9D, approve human resources changes. Mr. Bear. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the governing board accept the administration's recommendation to approve human resources changes. Second. Any conversation? Mrs. Fisher? Absolutely. Um, I would like to, one more time, implore this board not necessarily to say no, but to change the motion, not to, not to say no, but to say let's discuss this in a responsible matter as a board, going through the appropriate process, honoring 
not only all of our employees, but the voters who elected us to look out for their best interest and to all staff members who depend on us to do that. And I ask that we postpone the adjustments until such time we can make that and then we can vote clearly on the others. Well, if you put that, <coughs> excuse me, put that in form of an amendment, then we can vote on that. Okay. I would like to amend the <coughs> administration's recommendation to postpone the uh, reclassifications until we can review them and vote on the other HR items separately. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we're gonna, uh, any conversation on this? I actually, I will chime in on the amendment. Um, yes, Mrs. O'Brien. Kim, do we have it written? Go ahead, Kim. Amending the motion to review the process and request the adjustments, or amend the motion, the administration's recommendation, and postpone the reclassification items and approve the other human resources changes. Okay, so um, anyway, I think uh, the ISNT changes that I think are at the heart of the contention uh, are, are um, very well. It's part of a planned. Can I give you one clarification? Let me finish you go speaking. On. A part of a planned progression in developing our ISNT staff. And it's unfortunate it comes here and it comes now when it should always be part of the original MO budget, but. Um, there are some things that came thrust upon us late in the game as well. So um, I know the INCT game, and I know if these people left the district with the skill sets they have, they could get double what they're making. But the problem that we have is we cannot just hire somebody to come in and do their job because it takes six months to catch the speed to know what they're doing the projects are on the thousands of lines of code that they've written. Um, so it's it's unique in the, the situation where those people are, are harder to fill because of the nature of the beast. So the plan that we have in place that that kind of cultivates in house and progresses our people, I think, is actually pretty ingenious, and we get more bang for the buck than if we had to try to hire from outside because. If we had to try or hire from outside, I think we'd be in real, real big trouble. So um, that's my comments to your amended. Anybody else have comments? Well, I would like to clarify. I would like to clarify something um, before before you, because I'm a little confused that you're considering this is about ISNT. This is not about ISNT. I believe that is less than half of the positions we're adjusting. Correct. I mean that's. That's less than one page of the of the three pages of adjustments. Um, in the, I'm trying to look for the review so I could count them. Look, look for the red line because there's less than one page of adjustments. No, no, no. So you're, you're talking about the big page. I'm looking at his presentation, and in nine, there, there are nine ISNT process-driven adjustments. Right. So there's nine adjustments, but for that's for ISNT. But there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen non ISNT adjustments. This is not about ISNT. That just happens to be in the short amount of time that we had, I had an opportunity or I had enough time to speak with two members who have employees on this, which is Mr. Miglarino and Dr. Corson, um, I didn't have time to look at the rest. Um, and I don't believe anyone else has had time to, to give a thorough look at this either, other than it's just a recommendation. But um, so, so this is not about IS&T. This is about ensuring what we're doing is right and responsible overall. And, and I understand the need to grow our own, 
but it's the same thing. We grow our own teachers too. And, 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 and when I look at this, I also remind myself that we had a awesome uh, transitional employee uh, who, who um, wanted a, a raise to continue to do her job because she was underpaid and was told, no, we don't, you don't negotiate your salary. And so she resigned. So do, do, apparently some people negotiate their salary while others don't. And I, and I want us to make sure that we're not just, you know, ad administration says it, we rubber stamp it. I want to know that what we're deciding is a responsible action with tax dollars. So this is not about IS and T. And, and all these positions are not engineers. They are, some of them are help desk people or are people who, lo who, who, who resurface a, a, a drive and, and, and load software. So I want to make this clear that, that one, it's not about just them. It's a responsible decision for all. And two, not all these positions are programmers and engineers. Okay, so the, we have the, uh, we the motion and then the amendment. So the, that's what's on the vote right now. The motion plus Mrs. Fisher's amendment. I'm going to call the vote. All those in favor say aye. This is the vote. Of Mrs. Fisher's amended. Amendment. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those against? Nay. Nay. Okay, we go back to the original motion, which is approving all the res human resources changes. Am I seconding that motion? It's already been second. I am asking for, I, I sent the uh, superintendent a, a message and I did try to um, ask the board president, um, uh, which was his scuffle up here. Um, I would like a roll call vote because the voters need to know who voted for um, these changes. Okay, I don't have an issue with that. So we'll start with you, Mrs. O'Brien, yay or nay on the original motion, human resource changes. Ann? President Gregor, can you repeat that? It's just the original motion to approve human resource changes, yes or no? Yes. Okay, Mr. Bear. No. Yes. That was Mr. Gregoire. Uh, Kim Fisher, no. Mrs. Ordway says yes. It passes three to two. Are there any more public speakers? Seeing none, um, future meetings are posted. Can I have a motion to adjourn? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn this meeting. All the, Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. aye.